Hello everyone, I am Dr. Niti Supadhyay, third year junior resident from Department of Retro Diagnosis, Institute of Post-Related Medical Education and Research, Kolkata. I am going to present a rare case of proof syndrome under the guidance of Dr. Tapan Divarsar and I am very thankful to 22nd MRI teaching course from Indian Radiologist for giving me this opportunity to present this rare disease. Overview of my case report. Proof syndrome is a rare congenital disorder that comprises of vascular malformation, typically truncal, dysregulated adipose tissue and skeletal anomalies. It is a newly described rare overall disorder with serious morbidity. It is associated with three different missense mutation, PIK3C gene, and part of PIK3C related overall spectrum that is called PROS. The proof syndrome has emerged as an uncommon yet distinct clinical entity with some phenotypic variations. Its diagnosis is usually from cutaneous, trunkal, spinal, and foot anomalies in clinical and radiological studies. There are only fewer than 200 cases have been identified so far worldwide as per post in Children's Hospital website. I have attached a screenshot of the website here. Now, introduction. Proof syndrome is an acronym for a rare condition comprising of congenital lipomatous overgrowth, vascular malformation, epidermal nevi, skeletal and spinal anomalies. Initially, it was termed as proof, but now S have been added with the S emphasizing the skeletal abnormalities associated with the condition. It's now preferred. The long-term picture for a child with proofs depends on age and how serious symptoms are. Associated findings may include truncal subcutaneous fatty overgrowth, wide feet and hands, sandal gap deformity, macrodactyly, scoliosis, enlarged peripheral nerves, CNS manifestation including neuronal migration defects, hemimegal encephaly, ventriculomegaly, dysgenesis of corpus callosum, tethered spinal cord, and neural tube defects. It is associated with three different missions mutations in PIK3C aging and part of PIK3C related overgrowth spectrum pros. Pros disorders in, include Proteus syndrome, Proof syndrome, fibroadipose hyperplasia or overgrowth, hy hemihyperplasia, multiple lipomatosis, fibroadipose infiltrating lipomatosis, facial infiltrative lipomatosis, megalencephaly, capillary malformation, dysplastic megalencephaly, clippal trinoni syndrome. These disorders occur sporadically and comprise malformation of various tissues with asymmetrical overgrowth. Difficult diagnosis, varied symptom and continuous disfiguring overgrowth require concerted, concerted multidisciplinary approach in diagnosis and management. Role of radiology, especially MRI, is very vital in evaluation of such cases. I am presenting here a case report of a one-year-old male child who presented to us with epidermal nevus since birth and trunk, unilateral limb hypertrophy, syndactyly, and multiple asymmetrical lumpy swelling over face, axilla, and trunk. Now the actual case report. This one-year-old boy presented to us with the following features. Epidermal nevus over trunk since birth, multiple soft consistency, progressive swelling over trunk, axilla and face, syndactyly of the left, second and third toe with macrodactyly of multiple toes and uh, fingers. Asymmetric limb hypertrophy with discrepancy in length of both lower limbs. He was the first child born after an uneventful pregnancy to otherwise healthy, non-consanguineous parents. His family history was unremarkable. The child had delay in motor milestones. However, he had normal mental developmental milestones. His 2D echocardiography report did not reveal any obvious abnormality. We evaluated this patient with MRI, USG, and X-ray. MRI of anterior abdominal wall and axilla reveals large T2 and ester, hypo, hyper intense serpiginous and lobulated ultras in an intensity area without diffusion restriction. In subcutaneous plane in left axilla, anterior and lateral chest wall and abdominal wall, extending in free early up to escrotal sac and left thigh. Hypertrophic subcutaneous fat also noted in left anterior abdominal wall. MRI brain did not show any obvious abnormality except lipomatous swelling over the face. These findings were also corroborated with ultrasonography. X-ray of left foot revealed macrodactyly with syndactyly of second and third toe. The child displayed characteristic features of Stroh syndrome and could be distinguished from other disorders of cross spectrum based on clinical and radiological features in absence of genetic study. You, you can see here there are various varicose epidermal nevi over the trunk. T2 MRI sequence so hyper intense serpiginous and lobulated alter signal intensity area without diffusion restriction in subcutaneous plane in left anterior abdominal wall suggestive of slow uh, flow vascular malformations. 
multiseptated T2 hyperintense cystic lesions noted in right maxillary region, left lateral chest wall. The same has been illustrated on USG here. The cystic species are not taking up color on Doppler study. Uh, these features are likely of venolymphatic malformation. Soft tissue consistency swelling in right cheek region which, which shows T1 and T2 hyperintensity in subcutaneous plane on sagittal and axial sections of MR. USG also show fat ecogenicity growth in subcutaneous plane which is suggestive of lipomatous overgrowth. Left foot shows macrodactyly with syndactyly of second and third toe. Here, macrodactyly also noted in right great toe, left index and middle fingers. X-ray of left foot in AP projection shows marked hypertrophy. Macrodactyly with syndactyly of second and third toe with associated enlargement of phalanges. You can see here. Now discussion. The diagnosis of proof syndrome is based on clinical and radiological features of cutaneous vascular, truncal, spinal and limb anomalies and needs differentiation from other process spectrum disease. MRI is an excellent tool for characterization of lesion in adjunct with USG, especially in children where radiation exposure is a concern. MRI is particularly useful for delineating the extent of deformities, their management and assessing long-term prognosis. Classic presentation of uh, this disease is a progressive kind of uh, disease with clinical features described previously uh, that appears with child development, and, uh, development epidermal nevi, fatty uh, tissue, proliferation and skeletal anomalies. These children subsequently will grow into adults with variable limitation in everyday life. Severe neonatal presentation could have worse spectrum of malformation with a lower chance of survival, premature death by pulmonary failure, secondary to unmanageable intrathoracic masses, pulmonary embolism, and intralesion bleeding or fatal infections. There is still a limited amount of literature regarding management of this syndrome. This clinician suspecting probe syndrome should go through a thorough radiological and clinical examination of the patient if, and if required should be referred for genetic testing to confirm PIK3C somatic variant to allow for further research into this rare condition. Conclusion Probe syndrome is extremely rare and research in this area is largely confined to a very few published literature. Here when we report few of the first cases of Crohn's syndrome from eastern part of India. There is no absolute cure for Crohn's syndrome and management is primarily geared towards improving the quality of life. These are my references. Thank you.